Matter at the Two Real Cinema Club. I'm James Rosica. And uh, you're not alone at the popcorn counter. My name is Andres Lorente. How are you? It's always good to see you at the popcorn counter. I, t- I, I tell you, I, I've eaten all of our popcorn and more. I can't mm. believe. Uh, so we've just got out of seeing uh, Flowers of the Killer Moon. And that yeah. was three hours and 20 minutes. That was so long. Wow. Yeah. Can, have you, can, you, uh, can you say anything different about me? Look. Um... You, Do you remember you, I was clean shaven when we went into the film? You were clean shaven. I have a full beard now. Look, I can't believe you it. You have stumble, five o'clock shadow or <laughs> ten o'clock I just, shadow. I need to get a haircut halfway through a film if it's going to be that long. <laughs> it was astonishingly long. I did, now, it, uh, I was wondering whether it feels to me like films are getting longer. But um, rather than just pronounce this as some as some random opinion mm. without any evidence i did a bit of homework this week oh my gosh um so i uh, so i've been checking yeah. uh how long films are so like get this okay so let's talk about last year 2022 i've made a note down here right um i made a, just a note of the lengths of the top six or seven films from each year 2022 yeah. yep. um top film of the year avatar the way of water yeah. 192 minutes oh, i remember all of them i remember every second of that film <laughs> top gun maverick 130 minutes that was good jurassic world dominion 146 minutes ah that was painful doctor strange 126 minutes shortest one so far black mm-hmm. panther wakanda forever 161 minutes wow the batman 176 minutes Whoa. Uh, are you spotting a trend here so i went, i thought i would compare them to films from from 40 years previously i feel like see my instinct seems to tell me that 80s films were shorter so i, I thought well, let's go back 40 years oh god wait the 80s were 40 years ago that's <laughs> I mean, when did that happen oh my god i remember them <laughs> <laughs> oh, in 1982 the top do you remember what the top film in 1982 was uh tron i hope it was tron oh it was et oh yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. 114 minutes tootsie 116 minutes yeah. rocky 3 100 minutes mm. porkies no one's proud of that but it was 98 minutes <laughs> 48 hours the uh, fifth biggest film in 1982 96 minutes wow so I thought I would have a look at um, 1985, which I feel like it's like the first year of my kind of cinematic autonomy. Okay. It was about the, you know, the first year when I was comfortable. I would just go to the cinema on my own or with my friends. Yeah. Um, Back to the Future, 116 minutes. Rambo, 96 minutes. Rocky IV, third biggest film that year, 91 minutes. Jeez. Cocoon, 117 minutes. Jewel of the Nile, 107 minutes. No films are over two hours. Wow. Mm. Uh, in 85. Yeah. In 82. Um, whereas there were none of the top films in two, t- 2022 were uh, under two hours and, and several of them were three hours. Yeah. Hmm. Why do we think this is? There's really no excuse. So I don't I don't <laughs> I don't even know. Does it make any sense to ask why? I guess so. Um, I mean, I should, um, there must be a reason. I've been scratching my head wondering what the reasons might be. Because you know, nothing in the film business largely happens utterly at random. Not yeah. something like this. The length of a film is something you can control. Yeah. Well, I think an obvious thing for me, and I think the last two Scorsese films are pretty good examples, is that they're ultimately made for streaming platforms. Ah. Um, so yeah. people, you can watch in segments. I watched, I just watched Once Upon a Time in the West over the course of at least four nights, you know, because it was long, but you can come back to it. Um, when you're talking about the early eighties, I don't know that, I don't think we had a a VHS player when I was that age in the early eighties. So I think you, you had to go to a cinema and watch it. So I think there was more respect for the time. And, you know, this is just after the area era of the epic movies like, um, Lawrence of Arabia or Dr. Shivago, they had intermissions at the very least so that you could get up, you could buy more food. Very often you think of an intermission at a a play or something like that. It's a chance for the venue to make some more money by selling something. It's a chance for the audience members to get up and use the latrines, whatnot. Um, But when you're watching something at film, you've got total freedom. So I think that's a big part of it. I'm going to start with that, and I want to hear some of your ideas as well. But I think... There are a lot, so many more films that are meant for home viewing these days and not the theatrical experience. So I think that gives directors sort of this bl- blank check to yeah make a long, long film. I, 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 I think I agree. Streaming is largely to blame. I think what we're talking about here is what I call the C word. 
um, one of my least favorite words, content. Um, and streaming, I think, has more maybe to do with quantity than quality. I think streamers want to be able to say, look, we have these many thousands of hours of stuff for you to watch. Yeah. If you make a film which is an hour longer than the average, brilliant. That's one extra hour that we can clock up on our yeah. on our content factory. Yeah. Um, I I do agree. I think the way that we watch films has changed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it now suddenly becomes, it does become acceptable to watch a film over two nights, three nights, four nights. You don't have to return the tape or the DVD to the shop. That's right. Um, I think there is another technical or some other technical aspects um, that have changed as well. Part of it is um, that films were in part limited by the the um, the length of a VHS reel of tape. Mm. So I think if you wanted to put a long film onto VHS tape, you either had to go with very, very thin tape that would get broken or you put it on two cassettes. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So the length of a VHS tape used to play a role in the length of a film, which you thought you could get away with selling. Shooting on digital now means that. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. Have you ever shot a film on film? Film. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so right. So I mean, I, I made a film on on sixteen mil yeah. once. Um, yep. And uh, I remember being so shocked to discover at the time that when you press the shutter, certainly in this guy, and I'll do this in UK currency, but when you press the shutter, basically it's two pounds, four pounds, six pounds, eight yeah. pounds, ten pounds, twelve pounds. <laughs> it's, you know, it's counting off the money that fast. Yeah. That's true. Um, so, like, yeah, if, if you're all kind of actors are goofing around and making a joke, what? Well, that's just thirty pounds we've just spent. You goofing yeah. around. Yeah. I can't afford to do that all day. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, and obviously, you know, the cost of silver nitrate on a strip of acetate, you know, is not the most expensive part of making a feature film, but it counts for something. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so, you know, more shooting on digital doesn't mean paying for more feet of film. That's so, right. you know, it. it there is less of a cost yeah. in doing more takes once you've got your lights and your set set up. Mm-hmm. Um, so some of these technical uh, um, changes mean that there are no longer the penalties for making long films. And if you're Martin Scorsese, you know, you're 80 now, who's going to tell you, cut your film down? Yeah. You know, who's going to take you to one side and say, Martin, we can't afford it, yeah. make it shorter? No one's going to tell you that anymore. You can make the film whatever length you like. So he was going to say no. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm going to bridge those two ideas, I think, too, because I definitely, I definitely think you're right about the cost of film. And for me, it was always scary to shoot on film because it was expensive and it's so easy to mess up stuff, too. <laughs> it's, I mean, you're working, you're, you've got the film reel in a dark bag as you're trying to, you know, yeah, prevent oh my it from God, being yes. exposed. You're checking the, the film camera to see if there's a hair, any dust in the, in the gate all the time. It's just, it's nerve wracking. Um, so... I think that's an advance. I think um, the thing you say about Martin Scorsese is um, connected to my idea of director's cuts and final cut. Like I think a lot of directors um, really do take their time making these bigger films these days because in part it's more of a director's medium now than I think it ever was before. I think it was more – it's more about writing I think in the, in the distant past obviously when it, when film came out of the theater – um, it's been sort of an actor's medium, of course, and they're commanding huge wages. But I think there are a lot of directors who really just like to show their chops visually, and that means setting up much longer scenes that are kind of harder to cut, I think, um, because uh, they're meant yep. to be like um, calling card moments or statement moments on behalf of the director. So I think, um, you know, not not all directors are going to have final cut on a film, but some of the bigger names will. Um, and as a result, they sort of show off a lot more, I think, and they really want to, you know, just dazzle us with images. Sadly, I think very often they're they're just that they're just images without much content in them. But I think that would also explain it. Um, another theory for me is that I think um, we are getting really hooked on more episodic uh, television and limited series in a way that television traditional television couldn't do because it was once a week you'd have to wait um, before you could see the next episode of something and and nowadays you know people are producing series and then if it does well they all of a sudden there's a new angle so we've got to do another series Um, but when you get a long film you're essentially watching a series television but at your own pace right you're breaking it up so you I think I think viewing habits have changed a little bit and we are expecting to maybe have a longer piece of work that we can watch over days, weeks, months, whatever. But um, it, so I think that is affecting 
uh, filmmaking a little bit. Like there's, we're blurring the lines between uh, uh, serious television or episodic television and uh, and feature films. Now, there is this issue. I think you know, the other reason why streaming is to blame. Well, we've got it in for streaming tonight. Yeah. Is, um, that streamers. Uh, because we've all got so used to streaming movies at home, you know, and uh, if I wasn't watching movies for the pod, there would be plenty of films where I'd think, you know what, I'll wait till that comes out on streaming because it'll yep. only be, it's, it's like a, you know, it's a, a 10 week theatrical window now. Yeah. It's not very long to wait. I'll just wait, watch it at home on my big telly. Um, in order to try and get people out of their living rooms and into the cinema, there's a kind of impetus to create event cinema. Mm-hmm. It's got yeah. to be like, you know, it's got to be Barbenheimer. It's got to be something big. It's got to be Top Gun Maverick. Otherwise, you know, pe- people won't leave their homes to see a small picture. You know, a medium sized picture is going to price people out of their houses. Yeah. Um, but event cinema kind of has to be long to earn its name, doesn't it? I wonder whether people will you know, leave their house, yeah. get on the bus, spend 20 minutes going into town, queue up, have a drink buy some popcorn, go into the cinema and then think, well, the film is only 90 minutes long. Yeah, I feel yeah. short change. It should be yeah. at least three hours and 20. Um, so I wonder whether part of that is giving this impression of value for money. Yeah. It harkens uh, back to get here, people yeah. out of the get people out of their homes, yep. even though I personally would quite happy to see an inverse relationship between length of film yeah. and ticket price. Yeah. I think if, I, I would um, happily pay an extra three pounds if you would knock half an hour off the film. <laughs> Respect my time. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, precisely. It certainly echoes your, your uh, initial thought of um, uh, quantity over quality. I think uh, I hate to be cynical, but there's another thing at play here too. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hate to be cynical at oh, all. You right. love to be you're cynical. Right. You're so good at it. I enjoy it. You're right. Um, <laughs> so if you look carefully at some of the money behind the films, you'll see that the adult undergarment industry is really financing a lot of this stuff. So they're trying to sell more adult diapers, so they want longer films, so that we have to put on those diapers when we go to watch them. Yeah, I suspect it's all a it's a big uh, it's a big conspiracy by the makers of Pampers. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that people do do kind of. Um, bring out whenever i've talked to people about um your know, films are getting older are uh, getting longer yeah you know, and uh, people respond in two ways one they say no it's just that you're getting older oh yeah um you know and, and it's difficult to argue against that but the other thing people say is that no films are just returning to their normal length mm. the 80s was an anomaly and actually if you go back to the 50s yeah. or the 60s or the 40s you know you have films like you know the robe or or films like um Giant, Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind, yes, exactly, which is four hours or yeah, something, isn't Earth it? Yeah, Nation, yeah. Um, I suppose the big difference is that back then yeah. people would have a have a have uh, an interval. If the main function of a cinema these days is to sell popcorn, yeah. I think that is how most most exhibitors make most of their money. It's yeah. on the concessions, not on the uh, on the ticket. Yeah. Um, then you, well, maybe they should be welcoming long films so long as they can build in an interval. Yeah. I did read an article in the UK press saying that um, some cinemas have been screening Killers of the Flower Moon with an interval. Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. And uh, Scorsese is not pleased about this, but oh. the exhibitors were. Oh. And so were the audiences because they could go to the lavatory and then they could come back and buy more more drinks. Yeah. Uh, everybody wins if you have an interval, at least. Yeah. Um, can we not bring that back? Do I feel like I'm, am I, am I dictating cinema programming through the strength of my bladder? Do you think? Please, please. I'm on your <laughs> side. I, 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 I just got out of that theater. I still have to go to the bathroom. So I would say that, um, I think cinema's role has changed a lot. I mean, in the days of some of those films we mentioned, Birth of a Nation or Gone with the Wind, there wasn't a whole lot more going on. There was no television. So it was an event to go out. So you'd want to spend a day. And in fact, they used to show double and triple features and, I don't know if I told you about when, when my grandfather had the very small version of the circus or the show. Yeah. You know, he, his performances were between two feature films. He'd go out and have oh. the goat climb up the ladder or have the dogs run around and, and jump through hoops and all that. So, I mean, that, it, was, it was really a 
massive social function, and I think there was interaction between the shows. Um, we don't have double features anymore, and oddly enough, we're watching more and more stuff alone in our houses. So it's it's become much less it's a social time, and you've got all these other choices for entertainment. You could look at your phone for 12 hours. So um, <laughs> I, I think it's just – cinema just has a really different role in culture now as well. So – I think for a variety of reasons, you know, if they were older back then, it was because there wasn't. Not, uh, if they were longer back then, there was nothing else to do, and it also was, you know, a community. It was a, a you know, a proper movie house, and there was other stuff happening during the intervals and such. So, I think it just has a different place in society. Oh, those halcyon days of having nothing to do. <laughs> back, back, you know, back before television, I remember people um, people telling me, or people used to read the Bible for fun. Yeah. <laughs> no. And I, I presume older people back then were saying, look at those kids stuck in front of that Bible all day. <laughs> um, uh, what do you think is going to be the future trend? Or do you think films are just going to get longer and longer and longer? Do you uh, think we've lost the ability to say no? Well, uh, it, We've forgotten how to shout cut. Uh, we're just going to have to put up with longer films and stronger bladders. What and then and tiny little TikTok films to to, to <laughs> contrast them. It's 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 a funny. I think it for me it's a very funny um, development because everything else seems to be about shorter attention span and and less and less time in life. So the fact that films are getting longer, um, I think is is ironic to me. Um, I, I think it's probably just a temporary thing. I think people are going to start to realize that like that hour and a half to two hours is really where a lot of the great films exist. I think that's where they live. If you want to have dinner in a movie, you need to leave time for dinner, don't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, honestly, we joke about the bladder a little bit, but before I went to um, Killers of the Flower Moon, I was very careful not to like drink too much liquid that day because I knew <laughs> I was going to be in that theater from, I watched it from, I think it was a 7 o'clock or a 7.15 show and until 10.45 or something like that. It was long, got a, so I got had to plan ahead. Yep. Got a plan ahead. See if that'll bring a bottle. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, right. Speaking, of, I've, I've, yeah. uh, speaking of which, now I, yeah. I feel like we should we should go to the loo before we make a mess of the popcorn. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> it's already a mess. Sorry, sorry, popcorn <laughs> count. So, thankfully, the killer is the killer is shorter, isn't it? I think uh, both of the killers are shorter. Both of the killers are shorter. Both, both, both of the killers add up to about the length of one killer of the flower moon. Right. Ever, so. <laughs> oh, thank God for that! <laughs> I can relax my bladder for a week. Right. <laughs> 